On average, Americans spend more than $200 billion on clothing every year. That works out to over $600 annually for every person in the country. But whether we outgrow or outlast the clothes we get, there are some groups looking to outsmart nature when it comes to the fabrics they're made of. Does the future of leather and silk come from collagen and yeast? How we get rid of our old clothes isn't exactly environmentally friendly. According to a 2014 report from the Environmental Protection Agency, 80% of our old clothes and shoes end up in landfills. And that cheap polyester, it takes way longer to decompose than cotton or wool. For biofabric company Bolt Threads, greener materials come from an unusual source. Where did the inspiration for this micro silk come from? Mostly years of frustration as scientists in graduate school. Uh -huh. uh, spider silk without spiders is just not a new idea. It's been around for about 50 years, but no one can make it. Spider silk is surprisingly strong. Making it in a factory starts by isolating the proteins that make it so tough. They recreate them here in these tanks using yeast and sugar. And how long does the whole process take? This is about a three-day process. Okay. This hat actually turns out to be about 10% lighter fabric and about 30% warmer. So we actually learned this on accident. What we're finding is just a new technology with a massive amount of potential ahead of us. There's a lot of things that are great about it that we don't even understand yet that right. we learn along the way. While Bolt uses yeast to recreate spider silk, at Modern Meadow, they're using yeast to grow leather. If you think about the basic building blocks of leather, which is collagen, you and I are made up of collagen, right. you know, leather's it made up of collagen. Faces, keeps your you face, know, you know, soft youthful, and plush and pretty. youthful, right? But rather than have to rely on the animal to make that collagen, we use the most cutting edge technologies in terms of genetic engineering of yeast. And we get our yeast to make our collagen. So you're basically trying to tell the collagen, mirror yourself after cow collagen. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, any kind of collagen in reality, because we're not limited by, you know, any, any real constraints other than our ability to put the DNA together. They call their bioleather Zoa and is designed to look and feel like leather, but it removes animals from the leather making equation. You can paint with it, you can spray it. By being able to work with our materials as a liquid, it opens up entirely new design possibilities and new functionalities. And these right. are all things that couldn't be done with traditional leather. Could not be done with traditional leather. With traditional leather, you have to work around the imperfections, you have to work around the irregular shape and size of the material. It actually has a very long and somewhat problematic supply chain. It takes a you know, huge environmental footprint to make leather. We're about being able to create materials that allow us to be consumers for the long run. Bolt's spider silk hat will set you back nearly $200. And Zoa won't come cheap either. The company is planning on partnering first with high-end retailers. And the reason why we're starting with, with our partners who are, are, are focused on very high-end uh, applications um, is because we want to make it really desirable. Um, but that's not to say that this technology would not be competitive on a price basis in, in the long term. It just has to get the scale. Because right now, leather um, as a material has had you know, a few thousand years of advantage. We're just starting out. Could your future closet be full of spider silk and lab-grown leather? Maybe. But the high price tag could keep consumers away from these new products, despite their eco-friendly cred.